Hi, everybody. I'm Ron Russell. Stay tuned and watch my new TV show, Ron Russell Set the Record Straight, right here on Channel 111 or Desert On Demand. My show is seen throughout the entire Coachella Valley. Thousands of people see my show. Hotels and motels, too. If you want out-of-towners to find you, what better way than on TV? And remember, if they know where you are, they will come. Welcome to the Ron Russell Show. The Ron Russell Show, where movie stars of Hollywood's golden era tell secrets and set the record straight. When I was a young boy, every Saturday we went to our local movie theater. And I recall this one Saturday, I saw a movie called Mighty Joe Young. I was so moved by it that I began to cry at the end. Well, everyone at the theater began applauding when the film was over. And they kept saying, more, more, more. And I thought to myself, what's more? The film is over. Stop it. I didn't realize at that young age that they were saying, more, more. I want more of Terry Moore. Here she is with me today. <laughs> Hi, and Ron. it's true. Hi, honey. Hi, Everybody sweetie. wants more of you. Oh, that's so nice. It's the true. more the merrier, right? Well, the more the better. I mean, I don't know what those guys <laughs> meant when they wanted more. I mean, was hugging and kissing enough, or did they want, like, more, more, more? More, more, I'm probably sure, more, I'm more. sure they wanted more, more, more. Before we get into the really heavy-duty stuff, which is all about Howard Hughes, and everybody wants to know those questions mm -hmm. and have them answered, I want to talk about you're a native California girl. Right. And you had a very strange name when you were born, and your name was? Helen Luella Coford. And then they changed it to? Uh, well, they, they, they changed it to Judy Ford. And then, because of Judy Garland, they changed it to Jan Ford. They took off the K-O from the Ford. It was Co-Ford. Made it Jan Ford. I was born in January. Jan Ford was seven uh, uh, numbers, and I was born the January uh, 7th. So they went with Jan Ford, Eagle Lion Studios. And then I went over to Columbia, and I was called in by Harry Cohen. And he said, uh, well, you're co-starring with Glenn Ford. You, we can't have two Fords in the same movie, because Betty Davis and... Uh, I forget his name, Davis, and a, a big star named Davis, had just made a movie that, Jim Davis, Jim Betty Davis, Davis yeah. made a movie that wasn't successful. So we don't want two Fords in one movie. So he said, what do you want for a first name? Now, uh, Ron, up till then, there'd never been a Terry. No girls were named Terry. Every Terry, you know today, and heaven knows there's plenty of them, have come after me. And he said, well, I've had every studio uh, department head uh, vote for a name, and they they all agree with you. They all want you to be called Terry. And he said, but we need a last name. And he turned to my mother and he said, what's your last name, your maiden name? And she said, Bick Moore. Too long, but Moore is great. I've got a letter right here on my desk from Colleen Moore. He right. said, he said, Terry Moore, goodbye, Terry Moore. Get out of here. <laughs> but, but didn't they want to call you January Ford? No. Uh, no, because I couldn't have the Ford. Right. Now, how come I didn't call you Model T Ford? I mean, you've been every kind of Ford that was to be. <laughs> I know. They should have pulled that one. I know. I love the name okay, Ford. Okay, so now you I went on like to, to becoming a, a model, a, right. a little girl model, a teenage model. Right. And then you went on to becoming a movie actress. Well, I was a, uh, actually uh, did probably 40 magazine covers under the name Helen Coford. I was on the cover of Look, Life, American, everything, Red Book, everything you can you imagine. You got more Parade, in the Yeah. You know, Mm -hmm. That was my real name, Helen Coford. Helen Coford, right. And I did so many of my, I did Parade magazine over and over and over, and that's still in the newspapers, Parade. Right. But then by the time, I mean, I did 40 magazine covers, national magazine covers, and one year uh, I did um, uh, lots of calendars and everything. And then uh, I had braces put on my teeth, so <laughs> I had to do radio. So I had five radio <laughs> shows a week while I was in high school. Well, you were a busy little girl. Now, how was it you became an actress? Who found you? How'd you do it? What made you want to do it? Oh, well, 
even as a little girl, I was always pretending to be somebody else. And when my mother would even take me into the pediatrician, I would dress up in costumes. And I, if I'd see a nun, I would wear all black and go into the pediatrician in black. If I, if I uh, uh, watched the U USC football team, you know, I'd put p pads. I was a Trojan. <laughs> and I was always p pretending to be somebody else. And I re I'll never forget my pediatrician, you know, when they push your b belly button and put a tape on it, he wrote bunny on it. And I went <laughs> hopping out of the office. <laughs> so I always wanted to be okay. an actor. Now you go into films. I mean, you might have to be terrified. Ingrid Bergman, number one, you're playing with mm -hmm. in Gaslight, with Charles Boyer, okay? Then you move along and you do Peyton Place with Lana Turner. And then you go back and then you do, of course, My Mighty Joe Young, my favorite film. Joe! Joe! See the most fantastic relationship between beast and beauty. A mere girl mastering a primitive giant. See Mighty Joe Young, enraged by Hollywood pranksters, destroy Filmland's swankiest nightclub on the fabulous Sunset Strip. Mighty Joe Young, the picture that's alive with the most sensational action thrills ever filmed. Mightier than King Kong, Mighty Joe Young. And then you're in so many films. Little Sheba. Come back Little Sheba with Shirley Booth and Burt Lancaster. And here you are, this sexy little sneaky mm, who's stealing Burt away from poor, pathetic Shirley Booth. I know. And you're having that torrid kissing and love scene in the dark and the, on the sun porch. Dirk, the Delaney's all here. Is. I'll give a girl the chance to breathe. Who's the guy? That's Bruce. He wants to marry me. Can he kiss like I can? Better. He's perfect. And he's in love with me. Sure, that's why he's there and I'm here. But he'll be here tomorrow. What are you trying to pull? I don't go for this. Look, I only meant... I know what you meant, you dames. You're always playing one of us against the other. Him you're going to tell us a guy named Turk hanging around Turk, here. I don't want to fight. Oh, I don't. Turk, I don't want to... Okay, but don't you come teasing around me anymore. A Mormon, come on. <laughs> you know, did your religious background stop you and say you don't want to portray this and become... Like probably another Marilyn Monroe, a sexy love goddess? Not for a moment, no. I, I love doing the sexy roles because I got, uh, first as a, uh, as a teenager, I was in all the animal pictures. Return of October, October was a horse. Mighty Joe Young was a gorilla. I was in Son of Lassie was a dog. dog. I was with Jimmy Durante and the great Rupert. Rupert was a squirrel. So um, in Hollywood, once you get tight that way, you never get into sexy right. roles. But Danny Mann, who directed Come Back Little Sheba on Broadway, didn't know that Terry Moore was not supposed to be sexy. He uh, tested every girl in Hollywood, including Shirley Temple and Marilyn Monroe, and I got the role. And from then on, I couldn't get out of sexy roles. How about sex? Turk! You wanted to talk about something. I was just trying to please. Turk, don't go. Why not? I'm not doing any good here. Don't go. Why didn't you think about this before? Come on. Let's get to work. Turk, this is all we ever do. Are you complaining? No. Then what do you want to put up such a front for? It's not a front. What else is it? Oh, no, Turk, not tonight, Turk. I want to talk about philosophy, Turk. And all the time, you know that if I went out of here without trying, you'd be sore now, wouldn't you? <laughs> Turk. That's true, isn't it? Maybe. And how about tonight, baby? Gonna be lonesome? What about Mrs. Delaney? What about Mrs. Delaney? Women sense those things. She has so many questions. 
She ever say anything? No. Oh, you're imagining things. Maybe. Well, stop it. Okay. Well, uh, you're sexy. I mean, you went on to saying Hollywood. What's wrong with you? A woman at 50 is not valuable. A woman at 50 is not sexy. And then at 55 years old, you're in the, what was that, the January issue? It was... Um, 1985? Uh, August of 84. Eight, August of 84, Playboy magazine doing outrageous nudes where your body is absolutely that of a 25-year-old. Thank you. I did the cover and 10 pages inside. And the reason, and the only reason I did it, is I was so tired. Because in Hollywood, people think you're good from 18 to 25, a woman. And I wanted to prove that I was just as good at 55, and we had no retirement at that time that was before computers so it was too expensive to retouch so that was completely unretouched those pictures well they're fabulous pictures and now I'm going to ask you the great question here it is set the record straight Terry from your beautiful mouth did you live with Howard Hughes and did he keep you all those years that you lived with him Nope, you're not right. Never kept by Howard Hughes. Never, 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 never. I lived with my, you forget that my mother was raised by a Mormon bishop. I had very strict parents. I lived in Glendale, and until... You yeah, Playboy. That was, what, 55? We're talking about 18 now. Okay. Big, difference, Big difference, just out of high school. And uh, my dad did not want me to have anything to do with Howard Hughes. Okay. And uh, he was an investigator and had him investigated pretty well and said he was a womanizer, and my do his daughter was going to have nothing to do with Howard Hughes. And he found out all about Faith Domergue, who, right. he, you know, Got he knew her father. Yeah, and she, when she was 15 or something 15. like that. Yes. So my dad said, no way. And until they went to the wedding, um, there was no living with Howard Hughes. Rumor was that Howard but, Hughes preferred young, young girls, and that he liked very tiny girls, because he wasn't terribly endowed, and he felt that little women made That is him not feel, true. Okay, but this is the way. <laughs> that little women made him feel a bigger man. When I asked Jane Russell if she was ever kept or slept with Howard Hughes, she said, no, she got very offended. And I thought, well, Jane's a big woman. And I think I was the first tiny woman he ever liked, and then he liked tiny women after me. Because Betty was tiny. I knew Betty Davis. She yeah. was very tiny. But when you and say... so was Faith, Faith and so was Jean well, Faith Peters. wasn't that small. No, oh, Je no, Jean. no. Je Jean was strong. She was, Jean was about five, six, or seven. Well, she was, you know, very strong like right. a man. She could do anything. She right. laid her own brick and everything. No, I'm, I'm <laughs> the only... She I did, you know. She was an <laughs> Ohio girl. I would use laid her, and she laid the bricks. Yeah, I right, like right. <laughs> But but she was a tomboy and, and very, very strong, could do anything, okay. Jane. First of all, you told me that, that somebody was always in love with Gary Cooper. I've always been in love with Howard and always will be. But let's talk more about Howard Hughes. All right. By the way, you said that he always went for small women. Isn't it interesting? In the 40s and 50s, the song was Five Foot Two, Eyes of Blue. Mm. All women were tiny. Look back at uh, Gloria Swanson, Mary exactly. Pickford, Shirley Temple. Marilyn Monroe. You know, they were all small. There was no such thing as a it's tall true. movie star uh, woman. And, and, uh, but, but Howard said he only loved three women in his entire life, it was in love. First was Katie Hepburn, and she was considered a tall woman at that time and a, yes. and a great tennis I can't player, strong. That romance. Oh, he was madly in love I can't with Kate. I believe it, how anybody could be madly in love with Katharine Hepburn. A great legs. And, great uh, actress, but not great, a beauty. Uh, that wasn't, it had nothing to do with it. I mean, he was in love with her. She was a debutante. He, he was right. into what he called debutramps at that time. Debutramps. Then, right. then his second, she was Academy Award actress. He loved good right. actresses, right. Uh, intelligence. He said she could ask you a question in such a way that she made your answer sound intelligent. Right. It made him feel, you know, made him feel intelligent. Sure. <laughs> his second, the second woman he loved was Ginger Rogers. Never knew that. Yeah. And Ginger? The, Ginger. And the you third was it. me. Yep. Okay. And you never loved Jean Peters? No. He, really? he, she, she was the best friend he ever had, he said. Meanwhile, she got all the money when he died. She got nothing. Why is that? She was his wife. It was widow. She really never married him. Oh, come on now. What does this guy have? But, make fake marriages all over the town? Well, let, he, let me tell you something. I've got a copy of the marriage certificate in my book, The Beauty and the Billionaire. I can get it out and show it to you. Oh, he boy. never signed the... He, he used false names and never signed the marriage certificate. Well, Jane told me that you married him on a boat. Yeah. And there weren't any papers to yes, show. Yes, there were. There was, there was the, uh, they have to have a log. There's a log of our marriage. And I wasn't going to tell anybody we were married. But when he died, 
The family found the log of our marriage. Well, why'd you wait for him to die to come forward? I didn't want to come forward. The family found the log of our marriage, and they sued me thinking I was going to go after his money. Well, you did. I, no, I didn't. They sued me. I answered the suit. I said, all I want is you, t now that you've got all this publicity that I was married to him, you've embarrassed me. I have children. I've been married to somebody else. Which I you were a bigamist. Yes, exactly. Oh, I don't want that. No. I mean, give me a break. Exactly. And Gene Peters, he was... Married to? No, he never married her because he didn't want to be a bigamist. I'm confused. Yeah, it's very confusing. I'm very confused. Yeah, he didn't marry Jean. He made her happy, let the world think they were married, and but uh, I've got I've got their marriage certificate. She used the name Marilyn. I forget the name he uses. He didn't sign the marriage certificate. It was not legal. Now, was he crazy then, or going crazy, or starting to? Do he crazy? wasn't crazy till, you know, th th I love what Scorsese did in the movie and everything. Oh, you did? I was going to ask yeah. you about the movie. Yeah, but, but and, and I, uh, 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 Jane and I both worked with Leo. We're Annie Jane right. and, and Annie Terry. We love right. him to pieces. Right. But they didn't have an ending. I mean, he's 29 years old. Howard died at 72. Sure. What the reason, what happened with Howard, is he didn't go crazy. This is what happened. He had five airplane crashes. After the fifth airplane crash, he had to have medications the rest of his life. Right. And so, uh, and, and so people discovered that around him, uh, control the drugs, you control the man, and, and, and they made him into an addict, control the drugs, you control the man, and he became a prisoner of his own guards. But that went over t a, a long, long period of time. It didn't happen until he was old. Okay. Yes. Your pal and my pal, Jane, Jane Russell, Russell, who we love. We adore her. We adore Janie. She's my bud, and I don't want to get her in trouble. Yeah. But Jane said to me on my show mm -hmm. that the Mormon mafia kidnapped him and took him out of the country, and that's the end of that. Well, let me tell you what happened. I call it the triumvirate. Nadine Henley was his secretary, Howard Hughes's secretary. She hired a Mormon named Bill Gay. Bill Gay was my chauffeur. You know, when I was married to oh, Howard. Gay chauffeur. Yeah, gay chauffeur. <laughs> and I never liked him. I mean, he was one of these. Uh, he was, yes, Mr. Hughes, no, Mr. Hughes. And I would stand behind him and go, Mr. Hughes, yes, Mr. Hughes. You know, I'd have Howard just dying laughing and everything. Anyway, he got together with Chester Davis, who was Howard's attorney. I think Chester was, I don't know if he was Jewish or Catholic. Nadine was Catholic. And Bill Gay was were Mormon. They got together and they... Uh, hired uh, Roy was ca uh, was a Catholic boy. Some of the other boys were the rest of the boys were Mormon, but they were just kids that were hired out of school that uh, cut his hair, uh, 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 watched him, rolled him out of bed, showered him, stuff like that. But the three people who took over were those three guys. But the the Mormon mafia that story started, but it now, really when wasn't. Was the last time you saw Howard alive and hugged him and kissed him and told him you loved him. Um, was over the telephone the last time I told him I hugged, uh, I loved him, and that was when he was in London. And was he coherent? Was very, he? So he, very. And, and on that and, phone and call, and he was. What did he say back to you? He went, oh, oh, oh. We had an uh, an alligator love call. I made a movie with alligators, <laughs> and that meant I love you. <laughs> I know. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I bet nobody out there knew that. I know. Uh, that nobody knows Hughes it. He said, "I love you." He sounded like an alligator. I love that is so sweet. That is so cute. And that is really a beautiful memory. Yeah. And then you never saw or heard from him again. No, never did. Now, no. when you went to court, tell me, I promise, I will never tell a soul. It's a secret See, the you Hughes and I. people, the family sued me. I did not sue okay. them. But this will go no further than yeah. here. Uh -huh. It's our secret. I will okay. never tell anyone. Right. How much money did you get? I, it's in the contract I was never allowed to tell. Uh, but, you know, the main thing I wanted. Was it a lot? Uh, I, it, it was over three figures. Oh, yeah, so it was, it was good. Yeah. Back then, that was six, three, nine, six, nine, nine figures. The Hughes family, I made them sign a document that I could use the name Mrs. Howard Hughes. Right. So I'm the legal Mrs. Howard Hughes, not Jean oh, Peters. Okay. Yeah. Now, Marilyn and every Mon every Marilyn living Monroe. Hughes and 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 from the uh, his mother's family have signed it. Okay, Marilyn Monroe. Right. I've never met her, of course, but mm -hmm. I know so many people that did know her, and I always ask the question about Marilyn Monroe because everybody throughout the entire world wants to know everything there is to know about Marilyn Monroe. Mm -hmm. 
and I found that most people said she was shy, quiet, and not interesting. Just a used object that men used. Mm -hmm. And for Marilyn to go to bed with somebody was the same as shaking hands goodnight. It meant nothing to her. Mm -hmm. Did you know Marilyn well? Quite well, yes. I had to do scenes with her every day at, the, uh, at uh, Columbia Is Studios. True? Is it true? Was Marilyn this, in, this desensitized? Was she really not in touch with her true emotions? Did everything blow her away? Because Jane Russell said that on the set she was late. Jane would get her and say, come on, Blondie, we have to make a movie. Up and at him, let's go. Mm -hmm. Did you have the same problems on your show? Um, movie? N no, no, no. Uh, uh, Marilyn was narcissistic. Narcissistic. She was. Oh, completely. Oh, I thought she was just totally inferior. No, no, no. She was when she was Norma Jean. Which is interesting. She would get, she was the best makeup artist I've ever seen in my life, Marilyn. Did her own makeup. Yeah. She did her own makeup and she transferred, she became a different person. She went from Norma Jean with freckles and, you know, uh, uh, she had ro Rochese or whatever it is on the cheeks. Yeah. You know, ro rose, ro ro rosea. whatever that is. Yeah, Rosea, whatever rosea. it is. But I thought it looked good. She was always ashamed of it because it made her cheeks look rosy and healthy. Right, right. But she covered it up with makeup and she would come out. Marilyn Monroe. And then she was so fascinated with her image, you couldn't get her away from the mirror. And she would just stare at herself, and we'd all have to come and drag her away from the mirror. Because it's not a real person. No, it's not. So you're a real person. Mm -hmm. Jane Russell's a real person. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth Taylor's a real person. This is beauty that we can connect mm -hmm. with. Marilyn was oversensitive. Sens oversensitive. oversensitive. Yeah, oversensitive. oversensitive. Right. Getting back to Howard Hughes. I always uh, like to get back to Howard Hughes. <laughs> I know that you are a pilot, but of a jet plane, that you hold a pilot's license. Now, did Howard Hughes influence you or teach you how to fly? Howard taught me how to fly, but not jets. I learned, I flew a jet before Howard Hughes did. What the hell made you fly a jet? Uh, he arranged for it, for me to learn at Glendale Air Force Base. The Air Force taught me. And I was really lucky. I was the third w woman in the world to ever fly a jet. The president of France's daughter, Pompidou, was first. Uh, Jacqueline Cochran was second, and I was third. Do me a favor. I have to go to New York. Would you fly me? <laughs> of course. <laughs> do, you have, do you have a plane? Uh, no, I don't know. What does it cost to pro hire a jet plane to fly?